Hi everyone, it's Roman Khan from RMK Six Sigma. I'm just going to be running through a few examples from my new book Six Sigma Statistics using Mini Tab 19. This is the Green Belt edition. We're going to be running through some examples from this book. You can download the data sets from my website RMK Six Sigma. Hi everyone, one of the most popular videos I made last time was for Gauge R and R. So for the new book Six Sigma Statistics using Mini Tab 19. I'm going to start off with a gauge R&R &R example. It's a different one to the one we did before, but you can find it in the book. And if you download the data set, you can work along as well. So we're going to be doing example 11.10.1, which is called lithium concentration in drinking water. So the example starts off and it says, Khan Smart Water claims to contain lithium in ionic form, which boosts intelligence. The team in the lab uses X-ray fluorescent spectrometry to verify the lithium concentration. In order to ensure they are working consistently, a gauge R&R &R crossed data collection exercise was conducted. The data collection involved four lab operators, four repeat measurements, and eight parts. By checking the previous analytical data, it was found that the process standard deviation was 0.14 micrograms per liter, obviously of lithium, so the objective is to analyze the results of the gauge R&R &R and to establish if the measurement system is acceptable. If it is not acceptable, make recommendations for improvement. One of the key points here is that we've only got eight parts, which is below the minimum number of parts required uh, to be able to understand the process variation. But what we have got is a process standard deviation of historical measurements at 0.14. So we'll be putting that into the gauge R&R &R menu instead of asking Minitab to calculate process variation from the eight parts that we've got. OK, so let's now have a look at the data, which I've already entered into Minitab 19. So this analysis has got two steps. The first step is to produce a gauge run chart so we can look at the data, and make a visual assessment. And the second step is to catch, actually conduct the gauge R&R &R crossed. So I click Stat. Quality tools, gauge study, gauge run chart. Okay, and because I've chosen headings which relate to the menus, it's quite easy for me to enter these in. So, part numbers is my parts column, operators is my operator column, and measurement is my measurement data column. And I also recommend that you always put in some gauge info if you're going to be doing repeat measurements and analysis because it's really easy to forget which data related to which analysis so you can click on gauge info add in some information there and that will be stored with your analysis okay i'm just going to click ok on that I'm not going to enter anything I'm just going to click ok to produce the gauge run chart okay first of all i'm going to increase the size to 200 percent so we can see it nice and clearly okay that's much better so now just to explain the gauge run chart before we start, uh, we've got our four operators and it just so happens by coincidence, that's my brother's kids' names. Uh, and I think the symbols will be consistent into the gauge run, uh, gauge R and R charts as well. So brother will always be blue and R will be red, Mariam will be green and the smile will be the purple triangle. Okay, so they are the operators. And then in the gauge run chart, what we have is along the top and the bottom, we have the eight parts for the study, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And below the numbers, we have the actual measurements for that part. So for Buddha, these were his four measurements on part one. Then we have Hanan's four, then we have Muriam's four, then we have Usman's four measurements, okay? So what you can see in the gauge run chart is three things you can see repeatability so that as we know is the same operator measuring the same thing over and over again and the variation that we get we call that repeatability then we get the difference between operators is reproducibility so we can see we can make an average in our head of what brother got then what Hanan got and if there's a difference we can call that reproducibility so we can see repeatability reproducibility and then the third thing I look for is I try and guess which part had the highest measurements. So in this case, I'm guessing on average, it was part seven. And then which part had the lowest measurements? 
and I reckon it's part three which probably had the lowest average measurements then I make an estimate of the range between the highest average measurement and the lowest and then I try and think about the repeatability error and the reproducibility error and how much of a proportion that is of the range between the highest part and the lowest part so I can kind of make a guess at whether we're going to get issues with the measurement system or not so I can see repeatability I can see reproducibility um, and there's probably more reproducibility than there is repeatability um, and then there's a fairly large range between parts three and seven so my kind of initial guess would be it's going to be close but I think this measurement system is going to be okay but I don't know until I check the gauge R and R so those are the three things that I check when I check the gauge run chart okay let's run the gauge R and R in the assistant so click on assistant click on measurement system analysis and because we have continuous data we've got a measurement and we want to analyze that data so I click on gauge study R and R crossed and there's the menu that comes up okay so I enter my column headings appropriately so operator part measurement and we've got a historical standard deviation and you can see that's strongly recommended to have that so I'll enter that in 0.14 if you remember and we don't have any customer specifications so I'm going to leave that blank and just click OK to run the gauge R&R &R. okay I'm just going to reduce the size to 140 percent so it fits within the output pane okay so this command gives us three pages within the output pane the first of all we get this summary report and that answers our main question can you adequately assess process performance as it says in the top left corner and the answer we get is no and the reason for that is that we've got 42.4 percent uh, measurement variation as a percentage of total process variation so the process variation that we're getting 42 percent of that is due to the measurement system and not actually due to the parts varying and that is considered to be inadequate I can go to the variation by source bar chart and see how that 42 percent breaks down okay so total gauge variation and I can hover over each bar chart to get specific values you can see that 42.4 percent there for total gauge error and that is made up of repeatability 17.2 percent and 38.8 percent reproducibility so these two add up to make the total gauge error I know they don't actually add up to that value that's because we're working now in um, standard deviations rather than variances so if it was in variances they would have added up properly but because we're working in standard deviations they don't you just have to accept that these two add up together to make the total gauge error and the major component is reproducibility so the difference between operators is more apparent in this study there's still a fairly significant repeatability error as well okay so if we're going to make some further recommendations about uh, how to, we're going to improve this measurement system we need to understand where our repeat reproducibility is coming from and where our repeatability is coming from so let's have a look at the variation report and see how that can help us so starting in the top left we're looking at the reproducibility operator by part interaction and what we have here is for the four operators and then for each part on the x-axis we've got their average measurements of each part and it's a really nice pattern you know we can see that the uh, the boundaries stay the same the measurements do not cross indicating that we do not have an operator part interaction and what we've got here we've got Butler and Merriam at the top end of the scale who are probably measuring the highest and they agree quite well with each other on the bottom we have Usman who has the lowest average measurements we could say and in between is Hanan one thing I like to remind people is we don't know who's measuring correctly and who's not just because Butler and Mariam are agreeing with each other doesn't mean that Usman is measuring lower he could actually be right and everyone else could be having a positive bias so just keep that in mind in the measurements 
But this is a reproducibility error, isn't it? Because people are measuring differently. Even though they're consistent, they're measuring differently. Below that, we have another reproducibility chart. It's the operator main effects. So again, looking at reproducibility. So this is a box plot of all measurements by operator on the x-axis. So here we can see on average who's measuring higher and who's measuring lower. Again, I'll remind you, we don't know who's measuring correctly and incorrectly because we don't have a standard for these parts. But again, we can see a reproducibility error because uh, the step differences between each operator. On the right side, we've got the test retest ranges, which indicates re uh, repeatability. So on the left side, we've got reproducibility charts. On the right side, we've got repeatability charts. And the chart on the top right is broken down into two sections. One is by operator, the other is by part. And on the y-axis, we've got the range of measurements, i.e. the highest subtracted by the lowest measurement of each part. So let's start off looking by oh, at the operators. So the operator with the highest average range of measurements is this man. That means that he's got the greatest repeatability issue. And you can see how that then scales down. We can hover over any of these parts to assess which part it is. So we see Hanan has got a fairly uh, low repeatability uh, range, except for part one, on which he's quite poor. Well, we can see that one probably single measurement from Hanan on part one, which is causing a problem. But apart from that, part one is pretty good. And then we can probably say part eight is causing the most problems because that then has the average highest range. So what does this tell us between repeatability and reproducibility? Well, if I was going to target one person and look at their particular method by themselves in isolation, I would probably start with a SMAN and look at Mariam as well to bring down the repeatability value. And then if we're going to look at everything as a whole, we need to look at this average spread across the operators and work out a standard operating instruction that they can all work through uh, to bring them into better alignment. Finally, at the bottom, we've got some metrics in terms of percent study variation. And we've, we saw these on the summary report as well, but we can see how they're broken down. One thing to note here is that the operator part interaction is not present. So that wasn't deemed to be significant, but when that is there, we know that a particular operator is having a problem measuring a particular part. And one other thing that we should mention here as well, Minitab 19 is now calling this percent study variation, whereas before in older versions of Minitab, if you entered a historical standard deviation, it used to be called percent process variation. So just a slight change in the naming there. So it's always called percent study variation, whether you enter a historical standard deviation or not. And then the last sheet that we have is the report card. And there's no warnings on the report card, just information about entering a historical standard deviation. So that uh, brings us to the end of our example. Uh, I'll be putting more of these online. If you like that, please give us a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel. Mm -hmm.